Approximately 70,000 years ago, our ancestors experienced something we'll never get to experience ourselves. A second star in the solar system. And that's because roughly around 70,000 years ago, an extremely dim binary stellar system, today referred to as the Schultz star, passed extremely close to the Sun at a distance of approximately 0.82 light years, or essentially through what's known as the Oort cloud, which very likely produced quite a lot of disturbance inside the Oort cloud, but exactly what disturbance we're not going to know for quite some time, and that's because this region mostly contains extremely distant comets, and it will probably take millions of years for these comets to make it toward the center of the solar system. And so here most scientists believe that it's probably going to have some effect. But a much more interesting question here is really in regards to other changes. For example, certain orbital changes, or what's known as the orbital forcing, that might actually change the climate on the planet and potentially result in something like an extinction event, or maybe the opposite, produce effects where the climate becomes much more hospitable and much more beneficial for life. And well, how wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the study that you can kind of see behind me that essentially tackles this idea a little bit more, focusing on one of the most bizarre and most unexplained climatic changes on the planet that here researchers decided to assess using various very accurate computer models and simulations, finally providing us with certain results in regards to these star flybys. Or providing us with the simple answer to the question of can a star flyby disrupt the solar system so much that it basically causes a new extinction event on the planet and forces the climate on the planet to change dramatically. And that's because even though the human lifespan is relatively short for most of this to make much sense, when you look at a much longer scale, in millions or especially billions of years, since we get so many different stars flying next to us, here, the disruptive effects are quite possible. And so could such a passing star sometimes in the past disrupted Earth's orbit so much that it suddenly caused a shift in climate that might have resulted in something extreme? And in this case, scientists wanted to focus on one of the most bizarre and still unexplained events that happened 56 million years ago. This is known as PETM, Paleocene Eocene Thermal Maximum, that we've actually discussed several times before and that in some sense you can see as this unusual green blip or unusual surge that happened approximately 10 million years after the dinosaurs went extinct. And well, even today, despite all of the studies and all of the research, nobody actually has any idea why this happened, even though there are obviously quite a lot of potential explanations and different propositions. With one of these potential propositions being some kind of a star flyby, kind of similar to the Schultz star that happened 70,000 years ago. And while some of the studies previously did actually suggest that 70,000 years ago there might have been a dramatic climate shift from a relatively wet period to a slightly drier, colder one, which potentially led to a dramatic shift in what humans were doing. Specifically, it might have influenced early human migration because the expansion of grasslands and deserts in certain regions provided the means and possibly reasons for humans to leave Africa which then led to the spread of humans across the planet and the extinction or, I guess, absorption of Neanderthals. That's because most of us usually contain at least some of the Neanderthal genes. And though obviously this climate change could have been the result of something else, mostly because we do have a lot of different climate shifts, mostly because of the orbital changes known as the Milankovitch cycles, here some scientists suggested that maybe it was the Schultz star after all. Maybe this is actually what gave humans the reason to leave Africa and to eventually become the dominant species. And just as a fun fact, the next major flyby is going to be a star known as Gliese 710. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but this flyby is probably going to happen approximately 1.3 million years in the future, with the average distance of approximately 11,000 astronomical units or even closer than the Schultz star. And so that's sort of the main question this new study was trying to answer. Could some kind of a passing star disrupt the Earth's orbit enough to dramatically shift the climate? And while some of the previous studies based on slightly simpler models discovered that there was possibly some kind of a change that could maybe shift the climate. But this new study by Richard Zeeb and David Hernandez decided to just go all in. They created the most complex model involving the most complex orbital dynamics and most importantly, our moon, in order to calculate how likely is Earth orbit to change 
if there was, for example, another short star passing nearby. Now, interestingly, not so long ago, there was actually a study suggesting that roughly around every 50 million years, some of the climatic changes might be caused by these passing stars. With at least one study implying that PETM was indeed the result of a star flyby. But this new simulation and new model using the state-of-the-art solar system model, most importantly including the lunar effects, seems to discover practically the opposite. And here this involved 400 separate simulations and approximately 2000 different stellar flybys in order to assess potential orbital evolution and potential gravitational perturbations as a result of a giant object suddenly entering the solar system. Or technically entering the outer solar system and specifically the Oort cloud. Here we're talking about a distance of approximately half a light year. Now once again, there's going to be at least some effects, such as for example cometary perturbations, but here the main question was orbital evolution of planet Earth. And it looks like according to this study, there seems to be no influence of passing stars. After many many simulations, scientists discovered that there seems to be no influence on the climate of the planet, even when stars came relatively close. And here there is only one reason. The reason is our moon. One of the main reasons other models had different results is because there they just included Earth without our super important partner. But turns out that by including the moon, which is actually quite difficult to assess even using modern computers, does result in orbital stability, mostly because of what's known as J2. This is the so-called moon and sun quadruple moment, which stabilizes the orbit of planet Earth. And so here the overall conclusion is that, unless the star comes super close, which is actually extremely unlikely, overall these relatively far flybys seem to have no effect on the planet, at least in terms of orbital changes. There might still be some effects because of the cometary changes, so basically a lot of particles and comets coming toward the inner solar system, but here we just don't have enough evidence, and all of this is just based on the assumptions. To date, there is still no evidence suggesting that flybys increase cometary activity, even though it's kind of assumed that this might happen. And so when it comes to PETM, that resulted in this very dramatic shift in temperature, increasing it by about 8 degrees Celsius, 14 Fahrenheit, and that actually resulted in several extinction events as well. Here, right now, the best explanation is still a dramatic influx of carbon into the atmosphere. And if you'd like to learn more about PETM and what we believe might have happened, check out the previous video in the description. Which also means that that future flyby of Gliese 710 is unlikely to have any major effects either, even though it's going to come much closer to the sun and will be much easier visible. And so whoever is going to be on the planet, possibly studying the night skies and possibly observing the night skies, is going to be quite pleasantly surprised. Just like our ancient ancestors, they're going to see a new beautiful star, most likely visible at all times. But even though there is no change in terms of climate and orbital changes, now a much more important question would be to basically assess how this affects cometary activity. Is there a higher increase in, for example, collisions or maybe the increased amount of dust in the inner solar system that could somehow change the climate by, for example, blocking the sunlight? Well, that's not something we know right now and that's not something we're going to be able to discover anytime soon because when it comes to timelines here, comets usually don't survive long enough to connect them to various star passages. And even though some comets can survive for thousands or even maybe millions of years, once they do become active, they typically only survive for weeks or maybe months before falling apart and potentially becoming something similar to a typical asteroid. And so trying to assess the cometary effect right now is not something we can do yet. Mostly because there's just no way to assess the evidence and no way to connect these cometary activities with previous flybys. But we are actually going to be discussing a bunch of cometary discoveries in some of the future videos, so do subscribe if you'd like to find out more. As a matter of fact, we're going to be discussing the largest comet ever discovered that's now revealed something new and unusual and something that nobody expected. But on that note, the overall conclusion from this study is that, well, flybys do not seem to cause climatic changes, at least for planet Earth. When it comes to other planets like Mars and Venus, the story might be different because they don't have a massive enough moon to maintain the orbital parameters, but Earth seems to be pretty safe. But this actually brings up a good point. We know that Mars, for some reason, flipped its axis quite dramatically for reasons that are still not understood. And for all we know, maybe these stellar flybys do affect other planets. And though this is not something that can be assessed yet, 
We'll definitely come back and discuss this more if someone finds a way to explain this. Subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can send me DMs and stuff. Maybe support this channel by joining the channel membership where you can get early access to a lot of different videos, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.